So let me open this up. Surabhi Hudigere from the BJP is with us today. Nizam Fajdar of the Congress. Vijay Grova, senior journalist. Kishore Subramanian, financial experts also today with us. We're going to be, of course, delving into key aspects. This is about one year for the Congress in Karnataka. They're trying to replicate the Congress model now, they say, in other states, especially the Congress ruled states. They say we are doing it in Telangana. Now in the national picture as well, how... Guarantees in particular have been implemented, they say, in a similar way, by managing finances, they're going to, you know, ensure that the guarantees which have been promised by the India Alliance is also going to be fulfilled at the national level, is the claim by the Congress party. So the question today, of course, on the debate are going to be around the finances, whether they've managed it well along with delivering of the guarantees. We're going to talk about the law and order situation, which, of course, has been a big talking point over the last few months. And, of course, reservation... And to some extent, we'll touch down on the communal politics as well as being playing out. So firstly, let's talk about the Congress guarantees, because many believe that was the reason that the Congress party came to power in the first place in Karnataka. Before I come to Mr. Fajda, we've heard, of course, the chief minister speak highly about how they manage the finances. He has said that the borrowing has been there. He's not denying it, but he says... It has been proportional and it has been something that is manageable by the state. And they're very happy with how the guarantees have reached the people. So, Surabhi, I'll open this up with you. You, or rather the BJP, we've heard the leader of the opposition there say that every department is running out of funds and there's no development anywhere. The chief minister differ, begs to differ. He says that there has been development parallelly along with the guarantees that they promised. Uh, thank you, Deepak, for that. I think any citizen of Karnataka and especially Bengaluru will attest to the fact that development works have come to a halt because the Karnataka government, which, by the way, it was not just the BJP that has made this allegation, but 11 members of the Congress party wrote to the chief minister in July of 20. Uh, 23, saying that there is no funds being released to their own constituency. So this allegation doesn't come just from the people. It doesn't come just from the BJP. It also comes from Congress people. So having said that, the point here is that high loan being taken by uh, Sidramaya government in the last uh, two budgets is a worrying sign because you've seen how the fiasco in Kerala has played out when high subsidies and uh, low sort of investment and in capital expenditure has led them to a state of bankruptcy. Similarly, in Karnataka, your capital investment has decreased by uh, uh, approximately around 11 to 12 percent, whereas your revenue expenditure, which is your salaries, has increased in the same period of time. Um, so having said that, that is the sort of financial management that somebody who has presented multiple budgets, Mr. Sidramaya is currently playing at. And this is not his first time. This is something that we've seen during SM Krishna's time when Sidramaya was the finance minister uh, many years ago. During SM Krishna's time, SM Krishna released a white paper criticizing this very model of handling the economy, which is investing in subsidies and investing in welfareism at the cost of investing in any sort of um, uh, capital expenditure. This is the Sidramaya and what has happened this time around is because the Congress is strong only in Karnataka and Tam Telangana as two revenue uh, rich states, there is this pressure to sort of keep that political, uh, you know, win going. Therefore, what is supposed to be a state uh, achievement and state sort of uh, prosperity centric budgeting has become political budgeting to show that these guarantees are working, they're working, they're working, despite the fact that they are very clear signs that this is harming the state economy. I want to give you just uh, one other aspect. I would like for everybody here to think about how the FDI has sort of decreased in the last one year, one and a half years. That is a worrying sign here in Karnataka. And I know you said you will come to the law and order and other issues. I want to talk about that as a different guarantee that this government is giving. The failing law and order, the fact that there is an increased crime against women, these are the actual guarantees that the Congress government is giving. Whereas they are so hell-bent on saying that, you know, one year has been successful, all the signs, be it financial, people's perception or otherwise are contrary to that. 
Well, Surabhi, you're talking about the urban voters, you're talking about Bengaluru. Now, when you talk about the you know number of uh, people who actually turn up to vote, it's hovering around the 50% mark. Are these people actually interested in you know who they vote for, what the government is actually doing is a question that comes up. And the people who are actually probably you know uh, enjoying the ch bigger chunk of the guarantees are from the urban populace who come out and vote in large numbers as well. And this time, probably, uh, you know, there is... Somewhere a question mark that comes up, Mr. Fajdar, that the Congress has been doing everything that they can to deliver on the promises because the Lok Sabha elections uh, were there. Probably the, the kind of response that comes in from Karnataka will determine whether this was the right way forward, isn't it? The black spot, dog, jo hai na, dog, hai ki saaf chadar se tum safed kyo ho? Hum kale hai, ab safed kyo ho? So the black spots of the BJP cannot be just eradicated in a day or two. The BJP is good in terms of throwing allegations left, right and center. The prime minister is busy speaking lies through the day. And a, and a spokesperson today comes here and says why the, the benefits of the, of, the, of the Congress government should not go to the people. Do they have a morality to it? Do, have, do they have any ethical ground to stand here and speak? They are saying there is no, there, there is absolutely no development. Are you saying the Karnataka government and the Karnataka state has just about 50,000 crores to do everything? A 50,000 crores allocated budget for the guarantees is, is all that the Karnataka government has. The BJP needs to tell us that the rest of the budget, where does it go? What did the BJP do when it was in the government in the last three years? They took 3 lakh crores of the debt on the state, which was 2.5 lakh crores for the last 65, 70 years. These guys have taken for 3 lakh crores in just three years and they've burned the money. There is no trace of that 3 lakh crores in this, in this, in this, in this, uh, the treasury. They have looted the government with the vacuum cleaners. Well, what are we doing? Mr. Fosda, let's talk more about the current uh, situation, you, especially point, because we are talking about one year of Deepak, Congress. We are not talking you, about four me, years of BJP here. So let's, now. let me yeah. give you what we have done. Deepak, let me tell you yeah. what we have done. What we have done. 1.17 crore beneficiaries were registered. About 11,000... 37 crores have been released through this direct to beneficiaries transfer. That is direct benefit transfer to the people who have registered. About 12 million families across the state have got about 4,000 4, to 5,000 per month. And the nearly 43 million people of the state have been lifted above the poverty line. More than 1.2 crore families have, have actually, have actually started making some sense in their lives. Now, BJP needs to tell us why did you deprive these people in the state and why did they starve them? Is BJP going to give us the answer what they did during the entire four, three, four years of the administration they did in Karnataka? Why were they known as the 40% Sarkara? Why did the, uh, the QR code of the pay CM came into the every wall of the state? They have to answer these questions. Please okay. tell us where did this 3 lakh crores of debt was spent and why they spent it and who ate this money? Surabhi is going to answer. Surabhi has okay. no answer for it. He wants the people of the state to starve. Okay, before I when go back to, before I go back to Surabhi to respond to that, I also want to bring in the financial expert on the panel, Mr. Pauchdar, because uh, this is a topic that definitely finances are involved in. The BJP, of course, put, uh, put forth their point of view about how development has taken a backseat. They were citing examples of some of your own leaders, maybe uh, some time ago, but they did point out concerns over funds for development. That was 10, but right now, back, since one year has passed... Formed. That okay, was okay. 10, 11 months back. Okay, that's, that that's, was last July. That's, that's what exactly I mentioned. Then there was a because supplementary no budget that came in during in the session uh, that happened during the winter session in Belgavi. People, of course, after that were pretty content. But going forward, is this really going to work out? Is it financially feasible?